and then go through um, model answers for the May 24 physics unit 2 exam for the international A level of edXL so the unit 2 is on ways and electricity a couple of my students are retaking this module next week so they want to do this paper again and here it is okay so I'm basically recording from the screen so hope I won't be able to write on this script normally I do um, it with the handwritten answers I've already got the handwritten answers done I'm just going to talk you through it so the first question is temperature of a thermistor and the temperature of a metal wire are both increased so you've got a thermistor here and a resistance of a metal wire here which row a, B, C, or D gives the, gives the changes in resistance of the thermistor and the metal wire as the temperature is increased. Well, if you increase temperature of a thermistor, the one that you normally use are negative temperature coefficient. That means as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. So it's got to be A or B. For a wire, if you increase temperature, the resistance will increase. So it has to be B or D. Therefore, it has to be B. Question two is about internal resistance of a battery. So you've got a 10 volt battery here and 3.3 volts is across this section here. That means these parallel components must be the rest of the 10 volts uh, because we can ignore the internal resistance. So you basically got the resistance here and these two uh, resistances can be counted as a single um, item. They want to know which of the following expressions gives the potential difference across resistor 1. So if we know that this has got 6.7 volts here, um, then the answer is simply 10 minus 3.3. This is the rest of it. So the answer is D. Question 3. A ray of light is coming in from the top. I've written on this to show the theta 1 is 15 degrees. You might not be able to see this bubble. Okay. Uh, the arrow, I mean, the bubble is covering the arrow. So the ray of light is going down here from oil into water. So, and the refractive index of water is 1.33. They want us to work out the refractive index for oil. So the equation is N1 sine theta 1, where N1 is oil, sine theta being the uh, angle to the normal, the theta 1 in the oil, must be equal to N2 sine theta 2. That's the A-level equation for refraction. So here you've got the angle. So we know N2. We know theta 2. We know theta 1. The only one we don't know is N1. Change the subject of the equation. So N1 will be N2 sine theta 2 sine theta 1. Put the numbers in and you'll find the answer is B. Okay, question four. Which of the following is evidence that electrons can behave like waves? Well, electrons are attracted towards positively charged objects. Well, that's a particle model. Um, electrons can absorb photons. Photons is the particle model. Okay and move between energy levels. So this is quantum or particle model. So it's not part of the wave model. A C is a wave model because their electrons can be diffracted. Yeah, light is diffracted. So if electrons can be diffracted, that can only be explained by the wave model. So they will be diffracted when passing through a thin sheet of graphite. And electrons can be released by photons. Well, just to finish off this question, well, that's the particle model because that's the photoelectric effect, which is explained uh, properly only by the particle model of photons. So whenever it's photons, you know it's the particle model. Here's another question with internal resistance. Question five. Circuit shows um, a cell with internal resistance of 0.5 ohms. So I call that little r. And externally, there's a 6 ohm resistor. So, and we know that it's got 1.2 volts across it, so we can work out what the current is. So, I immediately write down an expression for voltage 
divided by current, so I know that I know that what the current is. If the current is this much, it will be the same through there. And they want you to find out an expression that gives EMF in volts of the cell. Well, EMF is the current times the two resistances, yeah, six and a half. But they want it to be written in such a way where you can work it out. So the total voltage supplied by the uh, cell is the EMF. Some of it is lost internally in the R, and uh, some of it is external. So 1.2 volts is external, and we want to see what is the total uh, that the battery is actually giving out. In other words, this is the equation. EMF is the current in the circuit, which we know is there, uh, plus the two times the two resistances, uh, 6 plus 0.5. So you could also write like this, I R plus I little r. So if we write it like this, it would be 1.2. Our current is 1.206, so this is the current. In brackets, you've got 6 ohms for the big R, 0.5 ohms for the little r. So this is one way of writing it, but I think if you write it like this, it would make, um, you can basically simplify this. So the 1.2, expand the brackets, 1.2 times 6 over 6 becomes 1.2 outside, yeah? So getting rid of the brackets, and then it'll be 1.2 times 0.5 divided by 6, and the only one which gives the correct expression is C. Hope that makes sense to you. Question 6 is the photoelectric effect, uh, which of the following describes what th threshold frequency means. Well, if you go straight to the answer, this is the answer. It's just knowledge. The minimum frequency of light that can cause an electron to leave a surface. That's the threshold frequency. If it's less than that, the energy will be less because the energy is proportional, directly proportional to the frequency, so it will not be emitted. It basically uh, will not have enough to reach the surface of the metal with, uh, and have any kinetic energy to escape. And all the others are wrong. So if you read them, I'm sure you'll, it will make sense to you. You just need to know what threshold frequency means. Question 7, they've got electricity. So here you've got a parallel combination. And here you've got 6 ohms outside the parallel combination between X and Y. Which, following, which of the following expressions gives a total resistance? Yeah, between here and there. So first you've got to work out what is this parallel combination, the one of the one over the total resistance of the parallel combination, which I'm calling 1 over RP, must be equal to 1 over 5, because these two add up to 5, plus 1 over 4. Okay? Now, if you, if you simplify that, uh, you will find that um, RP, yeah, is going to be 1 over that. So you want a reciprocal of this, which is 1 over these fractions. So that looks like what they've done down there, is what I'm deducing. So what you've got to do then is you've got to obviously add the 6 uh, afterwards. So the 6 is separate to this uh, value. So it's 1 over, which one's got this? 1 over a fifth. Well this one hasn't because they've got a quarter. Uh, it's not the same. This They've added the quarter to the fifth here. Okay. So the only one that looks like that, there's 2, over, two plus 3, that's 1 over 5. There's the plus the one quarter underneath. And then, um, so these fractions are the same as mine. And then it's one over it. That's the resistors in parallel combination. And then you add the six ohms outside. So the answer is D. Okay? So I'll let you struggle with that one to make you uh, work it out. Question eight is about standing waves and the speed of waves on a piece of string. So tension in a string of length L when the string is displaced and then released, waves move on the string with speed v. Well, the equation at the back of your exam is v equals the square root of tension divided by uh, mu. Mu is a mass per unit length, yeah, of the string. Um, and then they're giving you a string of length 2L and has the same frequency, same diameter, sorry, and is made from the same material. That means mu is the same for both uh, uh, strings, the one which is length L and the one which is length 2L. Okay, so uh, remember mu is the same for both, 
and the tension is double in string two and the length is double. Okay? So which of the following expressions gives the speed of waves on the second string, the one with length 2L? Well, this is how I've done it. This is the equation we need to use. So for V1, it will be V1 squared. If we square it to get rid of the square root sign, you'll see that V1 squared is going to be T over mu. So we have an, we have an, um, an algebraic expression for the tension based on string 1. Then if you do the same for string 2, then... Um, the velocity in string 2 will also be the same equation except the tension is double so you need to put 2 times the tension of the first string mu is the same square it to get rid of it you'll see that and then you can replace you can substitute for t using this equation and you'll be able to find then um, by doing the algebraic um, tidying up you'll be able to show that v2 squared will be equal to 2 uh, v1 squared times mu, and then it's divided by mu, so the mu's cancel out. So you get an expression, they put it as square root, they then take in the square root of both sides, and you'll see that it's square root of 2 times v1, because obviously the square root will get rid of it, the answer is c. So this is quite, as you get to the end of the multiple choice, it takes a little bit more uh, working out. And this is a, a tricky one um, compared to the ones we did before. Question 9 is about resistance again. So you'll see you have um, all different resistances. This one, this one, and this one. And they want you to work out with this combination and the numbers they've given you. They want you to work out the puzzle, which is which expression gives the current in the middle track. So the current's going here. I've, I've, written, I've drawn it going this way anyway. So here the total current goes here. At this junction, Kirchhoff's first law says the current will split and add up again when it comes here. So I've called this I2 and this I1, path 1. And over here, it will be the total current between them. Now we know from the values given here that total current must be voltage divided by resistance. So we know it's 1.4 divided by 4.7. So we know what total current is. And they want us to, and we know what the current is in track two. They want us to work out what is the current in um, the first path. So I call it I1. So I total, which is this one, must be equal to I1 plus I2. Yeah. Or you could then say, rearrange it, make I1 the subject. I1 is IT minus I2. This is the I total, IT being the total current. The total current we've worked out is that. And then you take away the 0.13. And the uh, uh, answer is A. Okay. And then we have question 10. Question 10 is um, won't fit on the screen all in one go. So I'm going to just read it to you first. Light of wavelength lambda traveling at speed C is incident on a metal surface. So we're talking about the photoelectric effect. Photoelectrons are emitted. Uh, from the surface with a maximum kinetic energy of half mv squared, where v is the maximum uh, velocity to make the maximum kinetic energy. And then the graph shows a relationship between 1 over lambda on the y-axis and the maximum kinetic energy um, on the x-axis. So what I've done is I've written the equation out for the photoelectric effect. Yeah, That means the energy of the incoming photon is equal to the, mi the minimum energy to get an electron to the surface and any spare energy here will take it not just to the surface but it will give you excess kinetic energy okay so um, I can change F for C over lambda using the wave equation so I've changed that because I need uh, 1 over lambda to go on the y-axis I then divide the, the left hand side by HC that means I have to divide all the terms this one and this one by HC so we get 1 over lambda equals phi over HC plus kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy uh, uh, multiplied by 1 over HC okay now the reason I've written it like this is because I want to show you that it's in the form of Y equals MX plus C so if we want on the Y axis 1 over lambda, yeah, this will be on the y-axis, then the intercept will be to do with the work function, and these two are constants. 
um, and we don't need it. Um, and the gradient will then be um, y equals mx plus c. So we don't need the intercept. The intercept will be negative somewhere down there. And on the x-axis, they put half uh, um, mv squared, which is the kinetic maximum kinetic energy. So on the x-axis, we got the kinetic energy. And that means the gradient is 1 over hc. So gradient equals 1 over hc. So they want you to work out how, if you can use the gradient to determine Planck's constant. Well, you can. You just need to change the subject, make h the subject, and you'll see that the answer will be b. Okay? So that's the final question of the multiple choice paper. Um, and I'm going to pause there, have a break, and then come back and do another video. Hope you found that useful. Um, if you're a regular visitor to the uh, website, uh, please show your appreciation by giving us a thumbs up, a like, share it with any friends who might find it useful. And um, if you're new, please make sure you subscribe because we need to get enough subscribers to make the um, channel viable because really um, I'm doing these for my own students and I'm uploading them for, uh, for other students onto YouTube. But the whole point is to make the YouTube channel um, successful. And if we do get enough subscribers, it can keep running in the future. And I'm also working on doing more exams for the linear at Excel as well as the modular. Okay? And there's also GCSE stuff there. So if you know students who are interested in revising for that GCSE, I've uploaded some revision videos as well, conceptual ones. Okay, so that's the end of the multiple choice section and hopefully see you in the next video and I'll do it as soon as I can in the next um, hour or so. If, if not, I'll do it um, in the next day or so. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in the next video. Bye for now.